Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com to another blog and to another podcast. Today we're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, which reads, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. It is so important that we are authentic with ourselves and with others. This is so for our posterity as well. Because if we're not, we will train them to be more dependent upon us or themselves rather than on God. We must never forget that we are not the answer for ourselves or anyone else. In order to combat this, I have found that it is helpful to make it a habit of admitting that I struggle and I am not the answer. It is the God of the Bible who is the truth and the answer to all of our struggles. And we really need him. In fact, we are most spiritual when we are most dependent upon him. Did you hear that? We are most spiritual when we are most dependent upon him. He is the one that everyone in this world is searching for, whether we know it or not. When we come to God by way of his word daily, we must come seeking him. And when we interact with him, we must be careful to be honest with him. It is in this context of honesty that he teaches us the best lessons. Never underestimate his ability to reveal truth to you, for he longs to do this, even when you have failed. Don't buy the lie that you somehow must make it make up lost ground with God in order for him to bless you. He is not like that. The secret to Paul's great ministry was the grace of God. It is also our secret to success. The ability to study his word and understand it is a gift of God's grace. This is why in verse 1 the apostle writes, You then, my son, be strong in the grace of that is in Christ Jesus. We underestimate God's grace, thinking that our sin is greater. Grace is what God freely gives us through his son's perfect performance, and we do not earn it or deserve it. The initial characteristic of God's grace is the forgiveness of our sins. Oh, the lifting of the guilt of sin. When we trusted Christ as our Savior, a great load of guilt was removed out of our account before God. In fact, all of it. He forgave us in Christ of all the things we had ever done and will ever do on earth. He even forgave us for the attitudes and shameful actions that we had had indulged in to that point. But he didn't stop there. His grace keeps going on and on, for it is inexhaustible. When we fail to celebrate his forgiveness, we lose sight of the bedrock motivation for pursuing him. Grace is the most powerful change agent in the world. But if it is not doing its work in our hearts on a daily basis, we lose the motivation to pursue God. So, we preach the gospel of grace to ourselves daily. There is a difference between merely reminding ourselves of grace and preaching it to ourselves every day. The latter is consciously and intentionally reminding ourselves of God's provisions through His Son, the Lord Jesus. And He did this even while we are his in, even while we were his enemies, according to Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. The heart of 2 Timothy comes to us in the words, Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, which is what produces the theme of 2 Timothy, faithful till the end. The only way we are faithful till the end is if we are strong in grace. But most, it seems, are malnourished of his grace. The imperative, be strong, is a present passive imperative 
Meaning someone outside of us is producing the power. Literally, Paul wrote, keep on being empowered in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. It is not being strong in our own strength. It's being empowered in his perfect strength. Let me reiterate that this command is written in the passive voice, which means God is the source of the empowerment. In Jude, verse 20, we read, Keep yourselves in the love of God. We do not earn God's favor, nor do we maintain it. To live out of the posture of God's complete acceptance of us on the basis of Christ's merit is the beginning of being empowered by God's grace. We must stay in His grace. We must not allow ourselves to think that God will ever change His posture toward us, even when we sin egregiously. In Romans 5, 2, we read, We have gained access to God by faith into this grace in which we now stand. In the eyes of God, we are perfected in Christ. So, we are never to earn God's favor because the Lord Jesus has done it for us. And when we learn to wallow in his grace, yeah, I said that, wallow in his grace, kind of like those pigs when I was a little boy next to my grandmother's house. <laughs> they just wallowed in the mud. Well, when we learn to wallow in his grace, it gets all over us. And we grow in our understanding of it. It is, at this point, that we began to understand and over time we began to stand in it with the confidence of Christ himself. It is his confidence given through his grace that makes us strong in his grace. Our determination to be good or our strength to be strong factors not in being strong in his grace. We can offer God nothing in our own strength, we can do nothing. We need grace, not only for our justification, but also for our sanctification. Not only in receiving that free ticket into heaven, but also being changed from the inside out. That's God's work, and it requires much of His grace. It's ironic that we grow in His grace most often on the heels of a reminder of our weaknesses, or our failures, or our humiliations in this life. I've often wondered why God doesn't just remove the stuff that trips me up in my pursuit of per perfect obedience. But if He did that, I'd lean on my own strength instead of His. A few stumbles might be what I need to convince me once again that I desperately need His grace. His grace is sufficient for everything in my life, including the forgiveness of my sins. And I'm learning to rest in that grace that makes me stronger with each passing day. I like this quote from Max Lucado. <laughs> yeah, I use Max at this point because a lot of people are dumping on him right now. And I think it's a shame that they're dumping on him. But his grace quote here is so apropos. And I'll, I'll close with this. Grace is the voice that calls us to change and then gives us the power to pull it off. Don't you just love that? My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.